One of the most important parts of playing Football Manager is to build an efficient and effective scouting network. This way you can effectively find all the best players from around the world and bring them into your team before the other big teams find them. But there is a lot more to it than just sending your scouts to a random country and hoping for the best. So today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to build my scouting networks for the best to get the best possible players. So before you send your scouts out to the icy depths of Moscow in Russia or to the sunny beaches of Miami in America, make sure you give this video a watch. And also, if you're feeling pretty generous, make sure you give it a like as well. Subscribe if you're new around here for more Foot Manager content and leave a comment down below with your best scouting tips. So in this video, we're going to use my Wrexham save that we've been doing here on the channel as a template for how to build a scouting network at different levels of football. In the National League, when we started, that's a pretty small scouting network. As we got up further towards the Championship, our scouting network expands a little bit to help recruit. And then when we got to the Premier League, well, the scouting network really expands there. So different levels of football for the different levels of teams you might be managing at. So if we jump straight into this Wrexham save and we join us at the end of Season 1, when we won the National League title on the final day, of the season ahead of Stockport County. That was very exciting. At this stage, we didn't have a whole lot of money. Uh, we weren't allowed a big recruitment team and we were only allowed to scout to the United Kingdom and Ireland. So not a whole lot of scope to do things. But when you are this low down, it's really good to build the fundamentals of a good scouting network. And that's essentially what we focused on at this stage. And it's what you should focus on first. So what makes a good network at this level? Well, for me, it means maxing out my recruitment team. And when I say recruitment team, I mean specifically the chief scout and the scouts. So we have one chief scout available and three scouts. The director of football also does play a role in recruitment. Now, personally, I never like to play with a director of football because I don't really like using them. I don't really feel much use for them, but if you like a director of football, feel free to use it. If you want to save some money, get rid of it because you are essentially the director of football yourself as well in a way. So I don't like to worry about them. But when you are building your scouting team, there's obviously two big things you need to look for and that is the judging player ability and judging player potential. Now I don't need to go too into depth in that because I'm pretty sure you all know what that means. The bigger the number, the better they are at scouting. Obviously though, when you are quite low down, you're not gonna get those 20 out of 20s, sadly. So as you can see, our team isn't too bad to be fair. 13s, 13s, 12s and 11s, it's not too bad. The next thing you want to be looking for is adaptability. Now adaptability, I think, gets a little bit confused sometimes. I think people see adaptability as how well your manager can adapt to moving to different countries. It also is the same for all staff members as well, how they adapt to moving to different countries. So when your scouts go to Belgium, for example, or Wales or Israel, then you want to make sure they've got good adaptability to be able to go into that country, start living there and working well. But adaptability is also very useful for when you sign players and when you sign staff members. So in staff members, adaptability is an attribute and you can see it like you can see here, 13, 13, 12, 10, 10, you can see that. The more adaptable a person is, the quicker they're going to settle into a club and that maybe matters a bit more to players than it does to staff members. For players, adaptability is a hidden attribute. So when you go and scout them out, you can get a report that says this player is adaptable to moving to a different country and stuff like that. It also means how quick they adapt to your team and tactics too. So if you buy players who aren't very adaptable, it will take them a long time to settle into your team and tactics. But once you've looked at the ability, potential and adaptability, you also want to look at the nationality. Now, if we click on Ronnie, for example, he is Israeli. So as you can see, he has 100% knowledge of Israel. He knows everything about Israel because he's from there. So if he was going to scout out Israel, he'd be very good at doing so. However, you can also see he has got 100% knowledge of England, and that's because he spent a lot of his career in England. In fact, basically all of it since uh, 1989 in England. So he knows a lot about it. If we take Erwin, for example, he's played his career all over the place and has played in loads of different places, worked in different places, and as you can see, has built up good knowledge of a lot of different places. Obviously, the more knowledge they have, the better they are at scouting out those individual countries. And it all adds to your overall club's scouting knowledge. Knowledge. But what you might not be aware of is that actually the nationalities of all of your staff members count towards the scouting knowledge. For example, if we go to the scouting screen and we go to knowledge, you can see that we have full knowledge of Canada. We have full knowledge of Canada because our chairman is Ryan Reynolds and he's Canadian. We also have full knowledge of Belarus as well and that's because our head of youth development is from Belarus. All of this means is that we build up a better picture of the world and we get a better idea of the players from those countries. So obviously the aim would be to get 100% knowledge of the world. That's probably quite impossible in Football Manager but the more knowledge you have, 
the more effective your scouts are going to be in that area of the world. So as you are rising through the ranks, the best thing to do, I think, is to sign staff members from around the world, sign scouts from around the world, even if you can only scout the UK, for example, or your country that you're operating in. Only if you can do that, I still would recommend signing staff members from around the world to build up this scouting knowledge. Now, if we look at our scouting assignments, as I said earlier on, at this stage, the board only let us scout out the United Kingdom and Ireland. So we didn't really have much scope for scouting. Now, if I'm being totally honest at this stage, I would just leave it up to my chief scout to decide what to do. At this stage, there's not really a whole lot we can actually do when it comes to scouting because, well, we're only scouting the UK and Ireland. Also, because we are not a great team at this stage and not many players want to join us and we don't have much money to make transfers, I think at this stage, yes, it's good to have a good scouting team around to build the fundamentals, but I think you get a lot more value from just offering trials to free players all the time. Players out of contract, offer them trials, see what happens. Also, a really good idea to just scout the under-18s of Premier League clubs as well. That's something that works really well for us as well at this stage. Now, obviously, you can set individual targets now, obviously, you can set individual assignments for different scouts as well. So if we take control of it here, as you can see, uh, we can go into Ronnie Rosenthal, for example, and go to uh, Scout Assignments and create a new assignment for him. So we set the competition probably to UK and Ireland. And for me, when I'm in the lower leagues, I like to find young players with potential who are leaving their club. So I might go to Add Condition Age, at most age 21 and add a scouted potential ability to superb which is four stars i then switch it to ongoing brilliant start assignments and he would be looking specifically for those sorts of players within the uk and ireland now if we jump forward to when we are a mid table championship side this is where things can start to change a little bit for us in terms of our scouting ability you can see here we have a much bigger team available to us and we're also allowed to scout all of europe as well and this makes things a lot better now again we are only allowed six scouts it's actually quite a small scouting network so we have to be really careful with who we're trying to target now if we highlight the scouts here you can see that we've got seven scouts from different countries although two are actually from england because the chief scout for me uh, does something a little bit different to everyone else but we've got a scout for england a scout for the Netherlands, a scout for Sweden, a scout for Japan, a scout for France, and a scout for Serbia. At this stage of your save, you do not want to be letting your chief scout decide everything for you. So for me, this is where I really recommend you take control of your scouts and set your own targets for them. So let's start with the chief scouts. Now, it just makes sense in my head that the chief scout is the guy that sort of sits next to you and whispers into your ear. That's, that's how I see it. So I like my chief scout to always be in the UK, just scouting out to the next opposition. That's always really important. That's underrated because that also helps with uh, getting reports on the opposition team for the next game so you can play better against them. Maybe I'm a bit crazy, but I just like the fact that he's always at the club as well. I don't know. That just makes sense in my head. The actual scouts, well, I quite like to send them out and about doing various different things. So that's the chief scout crossed off. We actually have two scouts scouting out England and Ireland. Now, this is because at this stage, uh, we are still a championship team. We still don't have a huge amount of money and work permits in the UK and Ireland become a huge thing for foreign players. So it makes more sense to try and focus our attention on the UK and Ireland markets to bring those players in without work permits. So Joe Monks is an English scout, which is quite handy because he has 100% knowledge of the UK and Ireland. He's got 18 current ability and 17 potential ability, which means he's actually pretty decent at scouting out youngsters for the future. And that's exactly what he is doing right now. He's out looking for players who are 23 years old at the most with a superb potential ability exactly what you want however we do want to get promoted to the premier league at some point so we've got our japanese scout here kai who has full knowledge of england and full knowledge of japan in the future he'll be scouting at japan when we get the well, not just japan probably more asia as well in general but he's currently right now using his english knowledge to be looking for older english players who can fit the first team his scouting potential ability is not quite as good as Joe Monk's, so we're going to be scouting out the older players right now. So as you can see, any player, any age whose current ability is good. That leaves four scouts to scout out the rest of Europe. And because our network is so, so small right now, I'm not limiting them to just one country. So we won't go through all of them right now. But for example, Patrick Busby is Dutch, right? He's Dutch uh, and knows a lot about Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, that sort of area of the world. So he is looking for young players with super potentiality in Central Europe. 
It's not that complicated really, I'm just looking for young players who are good enough to play in the future for us as we look for promotion to the Premier League. Also, a really good tip for you here as well, if you go to your knowledge screen and you then look for, for example, Central Europe, because you might think, what actually is Central Europe? Well, if you click on it, it highlights it in red what countries are in Central Europe. So we'll test my geography here, but we do have the Netherlands, we've got Germany, we've got Poland, we have got Austria, we've got Czech Republic, we've got... Which one was that one? Slovakia. Slovakia counts there as well. The point is right, we have a small scouting team still and we can't possibly cover all of Europe in individual countries. So we have to go region by region. And that for me is working right now at this level of football. If we fast forward to life in the Premier League, we now have a worldwide scouting network. And this is where things get pretty exciting. Now, we haven't actually filled out our recruitment team at the moment, which is actually quite bad. We do need to fill out this recruitment team a little bit more. We have two spaces on the scouting network and that will really help help us out. Now at this level we still like to have scouts scouting out the UK for future talent, we still like to have a chief scout looking around for the opposition players and I do like to have regional scouts looking for players. For example I think Tommy is scouting out uh, Northern Europe right now because I think quite frankly Northern Europe's good, it's not the best for young players though but I do like to have a bit of exposure there so I think Tommy if I go to his scouting assignments is yes doing Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, uh, all sorts of different countries there as you can see. Now the next evolution for me in my scouting network is to have heads of continents. That's what I quite like to do. Or head, yeah, heads of continents, we'll call them that. So if we take Sergio de Souza here, he is Brazilian. He knows all about Brazilian football. He is my head of South America South. So looking at countries like Brazil, Argentina, Chile, stuff like that. The thing is though, whilst I do want some exposure to Chile, Uruguay, countries like that, they don't always produce the best players, at least compared to Brazil and Argentina. So whilst I want that exposure still, I do want a scout actually physically scouting Brazil, spending all their energy just looking at Brazil. Because whilst this guy's looking at the whole region, He's not actually spending all of his time and attention on Brazil and he might miss players. So at this level of football, when we've got the amount of scouts available to us, at this stage, I'm going to be looking for a scout to specifically scout Brazil. And then I've got a scout who can scout the region in general and a scout who's specific to Brazil. So if we do a quick scout, so if we do a quick search for scouts who are Brazilian and then we sort it by judging player ability and potential and I'll tell you what, this guy right at the top has got 19 judging player potential. I like the look of that. He's called Paulinho and knows everything he knows about Brazil. Should we try and sign him up? I think a five-year deal on three grand a week seems pretty good to me. I've just realised now I've got to wait ages for him to actually sign the contract, get a work permit and actually join the club. Ah, but in the Wrexham save, we have just been given nearly £60 million to spend on players. So if you uh, watch the Wrexham way, then a uh, bit of a spoiler there for you. Oh, and another stadium expansion too. God, this save's going well, isn't it? I mean, I would prefer a new stadium named after me, but, you know, maybe after a few more scouting missions, I can get that stadium named after me. 29th of May. Right, um... Oh, that's a long time to wait. Look, when I planned to make this scouting video, I didn't think I'd actually have to play two weeks of Football Manager to get to this point. Press the space bar. Press the space bar, press the space bar, press the space bar, press the space bar. I mean, what if he doesn't get a work permit now? And I've just mashed through this for no reason. Oh, no, it's fine. He's got the work permit and now is set to join the club. Paulinho, welcome. This is, this is a long-winded way to demonstrate my point here, but we'll send him on a language course and immediately, scouting assignments, uh, create a new assignment. Right, we need you to be looking specifically, please, in Brazil. Brazil, please, we're going to look for players who are a bit younger. I think at most 21 years old, ongoing, but I only want the very, very best. Uh, scouted potential ability, excellent. Start the assignment. And so because of this, we now have... And so because of this, we now have scouts scouting out generally South America South, but we're also niching ourselves down into Brazil to find the best quality talent in Brazil possible whilst also still having that exposure to the rest of the continent. And so we now have in place a head of South America South, although really potentially what we should be doing uh, when we get a few more staff members is have a generic head of South America and then have scouts specifically looking in places like Brazil, Argentina, and Colombia, for example. You can do the same in Europe too, because you can have a general scout for all of Europe, 
but maybe you want to search specifically in Serbia for youngsters, maybe specifically in Germany for youngsters, maybe specifically in Bulgaria for players. I'm not quite sure whatever floats your boat, but generally those are the good countries. Also, once you are at this level, the sort of global level, there's one more thing you can do to really help your scouting network, and that is affiliate clubs. Once you get big enough, I cannot stress enough how important it is to get affiliate clubs in different countries, not just for scouting, but also for commercial links as well. It does wonders for your commercial side and revenue too. But we have links with clubs in China, in the Czech Republic, and in Romania. And because of this, we have 100% scouting knowledge in those countries because we have a partnership with a club in that country. And because we have that information in that country, it gives you a head start on scouting out these players. So normally, if we had no knowledge in China whatsoever, we would just click on a player and they would be completely blanked out. But we now do have a bit of an indication as to how good these players are because we have the knowledge of that country. We know how good their national team is and what sort of players they've got. So we have a general idea of what it is. And this can also really help with your manual scouting as well because you can see this guy and think, well, his technicals are rubbish. He's never going to fit into our team, so I won't bother scouting him. So essentially, in this video, hopefully you've learned that at the lower levels, you build the foundations of your scouting network. As you progress up, you start to scout out specific areas so you can get a good idea of what's going on. As you get to the global level, you might have a head of a continent and then scouts going into individual countries and looking for the best players in those countries, as well as getting affiliate clubs in different countries to boost your scouting knowledge of those countries. And for me, this system really, really works. We've managed to get some really good players coming through. In fact, in the last season, we had four players in the Next Gen 50 award. Like, Four of the next big 50 talents in the world play for Wrexham. Like, that's silly. One of them actually did come through our youth academy, but the three of the players we signed. We, we got them from our scouting network that is working so effectively for us because we've so well optimised it. I mean, 8%, literally 8%. That's, that's a pretty decent number, I must say, for a club like Wrexham. So that's going to bring today's video to its conclusion. But if you have learned something, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, leave some comments down below if you think I've missed anything, if you think I've got something wrong, or if you've got your own tips that we could all learn from as well. Leave them down below. I'm sure we can all learn something. And also, if you've got involved with this Wrexham stuff, by the way, and you've not been watching it yet, the uh, new season starts in the next few days or so with a transfer first special so look forward to that one too anyway thank you very much i will see you all soon have a lovely evening and uh have fun scouting see you then goodbye